Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at a brand new application just released today called Adobe Slate. And Adobe Slate is for storytelling. Very much in the same way that we created Adobe Voice for telling your story with your images and your narration, your audio, Adobe Slate allows you to tell your story simply with photos and text. So you have your choice of which way you want to tell your story now. If, you like, if you're the kind of person that likes to narrate and talk people through what you're showing them, then Adobe Voice is great for that. If you're kind of like, no, I don't really need to have my voice in there, then that's what Adobe Slate is for. So you got your choice of which app to use. So let's take our first look at Adobe Slate. So here I am on my iPad Air. Uh, or Air 2 actually, and I'm going to go ahead and just go to my Adobe folder and swipe over and there's Adobe Slate. So when I launch Adobe Slate, um, one of the things I love about it is it's giving me an explore tab by default. And that lets me kind of peruse other people's Adobe Slate projects so I can get some inspiration. Uh, I can see which one I want to use, or uh, not use, but which uh, concepts I like that maybe will help me tell my own. So for example, if I tap on the snowy aisles, um, it'll kind of just give me a nice big picture there and give me the text. Of course, I can then see the, the, the description that they typed in. And basically the way you navigate these is just simply scroll up. So great to be able to do this and see what's going on. Uh, in this particular project. I can see they use the photo grid to put in multiple photos. Again, just putting in pictures and captions and telling their story with text. And of course, at the end, uh, this one's by Rick Floor. He's got his uh, logo there. He's got a link to his website and it says created by Rick Floor. Okay, so thanks Rick. That's actually a pretty great story there. I'm gonna go ahead and create my own and when I create my own, the first thing it's looking for is a title. Now you may be tempted to just jump in and start, but then you'd be missing out on the templates that are here or just kind of the way to get started. So the little magic wand up in the upper right hand corner here uh, gives you some themes to work with. I guess that's a better way to say them instead of templates, they're themes. And since I'm kind of going to be doing a lot of these shots for from uh, Amsterdam and at night, I would normally use crisp because I really like that theme, but I'm gonna you know, step outside my own comfort zone and I'm either gonna use vintage or nightcap. And I think for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and use nightcap. All right, so then it kind of changes the theme so that way everything is predetermined uh, as far as the look and feel, and then you can just go ahead and get started. So I can turn off the themes and now it's asking me to add a title, add a subtitle, or and or add a photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the photo in and here's the thing I love about uh, our mobile apps is that they let me get my photos in the places that I would have my photos. So for example, maybe I have the shots on my iPad because uh, I you know, used my iFi card for my camera and brought them in natively and looked at them on the iPad. Or maybe I wanna take a picture right now and just use that as part of telling the story. Maybe I'm telling the story live, I'm doing like a live um, uh, post. Um, or of course I can have images and artwork in my Creative Cloud files folder and all the various ways of getting to Creative Cloud, including Creative Cloud libraries. Or more importantly, I have access to my Lightroom collections. And since my photography 100% of the time is gonna be in Lightroom, this works out perfectly for me because all I have to do is sync a collection with Lightroom Mobile and then those images are available in all the mobile apps. Okay, or for those that like Dropbox, your images can be in Dropbox as well. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on Lightroom. And of course, uh, it will show me my Lightroom collect collections here. There we are, they're starting to come in. And I can see very, at the very top, Amsterdam in alphabetical order. So let's go ahead and tap on Amsterdam and then it will show me my Amsterdam photos. Now, uh, most of these are just the raw photos. I haven't really done any retouching on them or any corrections on them, but there's one that I did do uh, for this cover. I'm just gonna go ahead and tap on it and that will bring that one in. Uh, this one I did some work on, added some nice reflections there, uh, used the perspective warp, used the upright feature to kind of correct the buildings. I, got, I did a lot of work on this one to make it look good and maybe that'll be another tutorial. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's uh, tap in our title. And uh, just for the sake of time, I'm gonna use my uh, iPad keyboard here from Logitech, Amsterdam, there we go. And um, we're at a, at a subtitle. Oops, there we go, street, 
photography. All right, and now at this point, scroll to start writing your slate. So it's giving me that option down here. I can go ahead and scroll. And now it's saying, what do you want to be your next thing? What's gonna be your story? So I can go ahead and say text, and then I can just simply start typing my text. I don't have to worry about the formatting because again, it's taking care of that for me with the theme. Uh, I can say, uh, I got the opportunity to head over to Amsterdam for photo imaging, a big photo show there. And of course, during my off hours, I went out and did some shooting. All right, and of course you can just keep going. Now, it's giving me a plus sign at the top of that and a plus sign at the bottom of that. So if I wanna insert something in between, I can. If I wanna insert something after, I can. So let's do something after, and you get the idea. Do I want another photo? Do I want text? Do I want a link? Or do I want photo, a photo grid? So let's do another, just one more photo so I can show you um, kind of the concepts here of how this works. And again, I'm just picking photos at random here. I'm just gonna pick this one. I think there are a lot of people in that photo, and there are. And notice what it's giving me as far as choices for the photo. I can do inline, which is kind of what it's doing there, just giving you the photo, making it in line with the rest of your text and your story. I can have it go full screen like the cover photo we did. I can have it be a window. I can have it be full width, and I can move it up or down or replace it or delete it. So I'm gonna leave it in line. Um, and I'll just say you'll find lots of people walking in Amsterdam day and night as well as more bikes than I've ever seen. All right, there you go. Okay, so again, I can just go ahead and tap the plus sign, and this time I wanna use one of the other ones, I wanna use a photo grid. Now the cool thing about the photo grid is it lets me select multiple photos, as many as I want, to kind of build this grid out. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, um, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one, I kinda of like that one, and I like that one. So as I just continue to um, add photos, it will continue to build the grid. I get a little arrow so I can uh, potentially, there we go, switch the uh, order so I can move them around, shift them in the order that I want. And of course, if I don't like a photo, I can delete it. Once I'm done, I can say done and keep telling my story. So um, these were taken taken before dinner and before sunset. All right, and just keep telling the story. And I'll do one more. Let's do another photo um, and we'll just grab one here. I think I like this one. And we'll do this one as a full width. There we go. And what I wanna do say here is, oops. Let's add a caption, love the night scenery. And away we go. So at that point, if I'm done, now what can I do? Well, I can go ahead and preview this. So this is showing me what my project would look like if I am done with it. And I can kind of scroll through my project, take a look at it, see my caption, see my photo, see my full uh, screen. And there it is saying made with slate, gets late. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of the preview. And if I'm ready to share it at this point, I can just go ahead and tap the share where I get a variety of different ways to share it. So I can go ahead and uh, do the author thing here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my name as author. Because obviously I'd want people to know, hey, this is mine. I can tap the photo, access the photos here and I've got a photo of me somewhere in here that I wanna use there in that folder there. And we'll use one with the camera, let's use that one. Okay, so I've got the author thing done. And now, and you only have to do that once, you only have to set it up once. Uh, in credits, 
If I want to put in any credits about uh, what was going on here, I want to thank uh, Frank Duerhoff and Scott Kelby for encouraging me <laughs> to get out and shoot. All right, and done. And now here's the options for sharing. I can share it to Facebook, Twitter, email, text message. And notice the clipboard is already darkened in because what that will do is give you the ability to uh, copy the link to the clipboard so you can do whatever you want. You can share it because you can share this with anyone, whether they're a uh, whether they're on the web, whether they have a mobile device or not, as long as they can get to a web browser. So I can go ahead and hit continue. And that will upload the story. And when it's done, it will tell me that it has copied the link to the clipboard. So at that point, I can do whatever I want with that link. I can email it out. If I didn't want to use their email uh, template, I can text it out. I can post it. I can do whatever I want, post it on other social media channels. And by the way, I'm going to leave this story up. So if you want to look at, the, um, at this particular one, there is the URL for it. And of course, I can say, uh, see the story, and that will take me to my web browser on my iPad to show it to me, and this is live on the web now. So I don't have to worry about having this posted in a particular website, although I can post it to a particular website if I choose. And by the way, feel free to appreciate my project if you go check it out. So that's Adobe Slate, and that's what you can do with it. Great for simple, quick, easy, beautiful storytelling with your imagery, with your words, and again, publishing it to the web and letting people check out what you did. Take care, and we'll catch you on the next one.